Welcome to this week's Down Home with Tina. I'm your host, Tina Thompson, and I've got a fun show coming up here. I cannot wait to share all of the great things that are going on in the community and what I have recently done, which the little story I'm going to share with you is going to lead into introducing my guest with me in this segment. But before I get to him, so I decided to take a little trip and went to Florida and we stayed in a cabin. And let me just say that I've never been to Florida where there has been frost on the ground in one of the mornings. So it was a little disappointing getting up and not being able to go to the beach. We weren't far from Daytona Beach. And where we were, we stayed in a cabin and it's near a national forest. Okay, so I once had a house down on the Gulf for about a year, which of course is beautiful. But when, and if you've ever been to Florida, there are a lot of ants, there are a lot of bugs, little crawly bugs. However, in the area that I stayed, let's just say that it made me think after I got home, you know the movie Wizard of Oz, lions, tigers, and bears, oh my? No, the area that I stayed in, it was pythons, alligators, and bears, oh my. And I'm not joking at all. So I have my little puppy I talk about every once in a while who's about five pounds. And it gets dark, just like it does here, about 5.15 and I have to take her out in the evening. And I looked at my fiance and I was like, um, I don't wanna go outside because what if the bear's out there? Because it, come, it came by the house every night. Now I didn't see it. And I think that's because I probably would have been afraid of it and been afraid to go outside at all. But it would come every night and look to see if there was any trash. So he says, no, just go out, you'll be fine. So I go walking out and I said to myself, fine. And I said it out loud so he could hear it. If I don't come back, then a bear got me. <laughs> but anyways, I also met some amazing people. And one of the fellas, he, he, he just cracked me up. And he reminded me of one of those fellas that I think that at the end of his life, I can honestly say I've met somebody who's truly like did everything and very adventurous that he was probably one of those little boys. Now I have a son that was at the top of the staircase and tried to jump down to the bottom and about give his mom a heart attack. And I'm just wondering if my guest, who I'm about to have now, who he has just been on the Forged in Fire History Channel episode of one of those that he has won, and it's Josh Wins, and I'm so super excited to have Josh. Josh, I know you just heard all of that. <laughs> so I'm so curious, were you one of those little boys for your mom where you were just kind of like, because you, you deal with knives and stuff now, and yeah. I can't wait to hear all about it. Were you that type of kid? I definitely gave my mom a run for her money. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I definitely like knives, but I really liked uh, exploring the woods with my brother when we were kids. You did? Yeah, so we, we'd go out in the woods and we'd build forts and we always carried our, our BB guns and stuff with us. So that was just, instead of playing video games at the time, there wasn't really that many video games then. But yeah, yeah we'd go out in the woods and shoot things with our BB guns and build forts. And was... What, what was the neatest thing that you'd ever found when you were in the woods, do you think? Um, I think the coolest thing is we actually found a, a pond out in the middle of the woods in the middle of nowhere and <laughs> we I think we were the only ones that knew it was there maybe the a few yeah. hunters but yeah. we just thought that was kind of cool oh yeah so I will share with you my very first experience with a knife and mm -hmm. then I will I want to know all about your first experience okay. and what it has been like on on this history channel episode so I was probably four or five I don't even remember mm -hmm. but I do remember that I wanted an apple to be cut up yeah. and my mom wasn't doing it fast enough for me or getting to where I wanted her to do it. So I tried it myself and I cut my thumb. <laughs> and that was not a very good experience with me and a knife. Yeah. So I've never really been friends of knives, but I'm really glad that you have because <laughs> of the exciting things that have happened. Yeah. When did you first, I guess, get a love for knives? Um, I've never really had a true love for knives until I started making knives. Uh, I did have a, a spark of interest in knives when I joined the military. Oh, uh, you're a veteran. Yeah. Me too. Uh, I was in the army. I, just, I was in the army. Hey, uh, yay. <laughs> we could then, go on for hours, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go on. So I always, you know, I wanted like a nice fixed blade knife to put on my, my kit. And yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, that was just a cool thing to do. Uh, what got me into knife making was about six years ago, my brother and I were bored and we had time to kill. So we made uh, a knife from a saw blade after watching a YouTube video. Okay. It was nothing pretty, it was just something cool. And then I, I hadn't done anything like that for years. Uh, my wife and I bought a new house here in Lancaster and I had a pretty big garage. So mm -hmm. I, I didn't know what I wanted to do out there, whether I wanted to do woodworking or I wanted, I wanted to do something in there. I didn't but know make what. make it a man cave, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. So 
I started uh, seeing custom knife makers pop up on my Instagram and I thought they were the coolest things in the world. They were so nice looking and I really wanted them uh, or wanted a knife, uh -huh. but their the custom knives are pretty expensive. So, yeah. it's, you know, I decided that I was going to try to make them instead, so. So a custom knife, mm -hmm. what is a custom knife? Are you talking about the knife part itself or with the handle? Is that, when you say knife, are you <coughs> the entire thing? When I say custom knife, I mean the entire thing. The handle and yeah. the knife, the yes. sharp yep. piece of it. Perfect, so okay. I do everything from, I make the steel, or I buy, I use the steel and I forge it to shape. Uh, and then I customize the handle however way I want or the customer wants. And then I, I make everything down to the sheath uh, to wow. carry the knife. And yeah, I sharpen it. And if ever, if whoever buys a knife from me, if they ever need the knife resharpened and they don't feel comfortable doing it, they can always send it back to me and I'll clean the knife up and resharpen it. So you, you have ways folks to contact you or do you actually have a, a shop? Uh, so I mainly work off my social media pages. Okay. So which is DKS Knives on Facebook and mm -hmm. Instagram. Awesome. So. <laughs> What led to you getting this opportunity to be on Forged in Fire on the History Channel? So last summer, a casting agent had reached out to me about mm -hmm. making, well, about applying for the show. And <gasps> I left her on red for about a year. Uh, <laughs> at the time when she had messaged me, I had, I was mainly doing a process that's called stock removal. Yeah. Uh, I designed my knives and I just kind of traced them on the steel and cut them out. And uh, But this year, I actually started forging more. Uh, I made a uh, I met a blacksmith in Delaware uh, who's pretty well known on YouTube and him and I were just forging around and it was fun and I just got hooked to it. <clears throat> so doing that this year, uh, I remember that she had messaged me. I was like, well, you know, if you win the show, it's a $10,000 prize. I was like, you know, <laughs> I'll roll the dice and see what happens, you know? Like, <laughs> Why not? Yeah. So <laughs> I reached back out to her and she quickly responded and I went through the process and I think it only took a few months and then it was just a waiting game for availability for show dates. So, so are they just they're just out looking for folks. Of course, obviously those with yeah. talent. They uh, know what they're doing. I think I'm not sure how they find us. Uh, I don't know if they like search the hashtags and find other knife makers and just reach out to whoever they find. But uh, you had different levels, of course, that you mm -hmm. have to go through. Was there one specific level that was more of a challenge for you? than maybe the others? Uh, I mean, I feel throughout the entire episode it was kind of a, a challenge for me. Because uh, so, you're limited on time, right, Josh? Yes. To get so these things done. I've got three hours in the first round to forge out a knife. Uh, and the challenge itself, they basically gave us a bunch of scrap steel and it was a brute to forge challenge. Uh, basically, I had to pick a piece of steel, determine, uh, use my math skills yeah, to determine yeah. what the volume of that steel is, what, when I forge it, what it will draw out to. Um, and I was only allowed to cut uh, steel off or cut material off uh, in the, when I grabbed the steel. As soon as I put that steel on the forge, I wasn't allowed to remove anything off of it. Uh, so a brute to forge definition is forging the knife completely to shape and basically all you have to do after you forge it is sharpen it and it's done. Now did you already know what the rules <clears throat> were and expectations were for you for the show before hand or you had no. absolutely no idea. So you so walk on and, and that's you it. with that thing. That's yeah. So, well. so I immediately knew what the challenge was that they wanted. Uh, I knew what type of knife I needed to make. I've never forged that style knife before. I usually, I like to forge thick and then uh, grind it to shape. Uh, so this was a little bit challenging for me, but I had messed up from the very beginning because I knew I needed to cut steel off oh. of it. My math skills aren't the greatest. Uh, but one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to weld a handle to it so I can work it in the forge. And I actually, as I was doing that, I was thinking that the steel is so big, it's gonna take a long time to heat up. And uh, as I'm walking over to cut the steel off, I'm thinking about how long it's gonna to take to soak in the forge. And I just threw it in the forge. And as I'm standing there looking around, or well, looking at my steel in the forge, I look around and I see everybody else cutting their steel. And I realized I completely forgot to do that. So I was like, oh. like that little mistake could have sent me home right from the, the get go. Oh uh, no. But I was able to make it work. You I, were. I put all yeah. the extra steel that I had into the handle and it was like half an inch thick. It was huge. And uh, I just worked on really defining that blade. So, it, you know, hopefully if I made it to the second round, I could address the, the weight issue and the, the handle. So. What is your favorite thing about doing the episode on Forged and Fired? The favorite thing about it is the fact that 
everything that I did on that show uh, from the first round to the final round was something I've never done. Uh, I knew what I needed to do, but I, uh, I've never made a blade that large in the first round. Uh, in the final round, uh, the historic weapon I had to make, I've never done anything like that before. And it was a challenge and it was something that on a normal day I would never, you know, put myself out of my comfort yeah. zone to do that and yeah. it really pushed me to try something new and I realized I could do it and now I'm just, that's what I'm going to continue doing. I'm going to continue pushing myself and pushing Good for my limits. You. <laughs> so. Yeah. Do you recommend people to, to just try something new yeah, to do that? Yeah, absolutely. So, Was I mean, it the adrenaline too? Did that, I mean, there had to have been adrenaline during this competition. Uh, I tried no? to at a point. <laughs> like breathe, remind Yeah, yourself. I just kind of try to relax and just, the biggest thing during the, the first few rounds was for me, it was, I was trying to, I felt like I was pretty calm. Uh, I had a plan, I was sticking to it, and I tried to manage my time uh, well. It was just the heat. It gets so hot in there. Oh, yeah. You hear them talk about how hot it gets in there, but I mean, I feel like I'm in pretty decent shape, and I'm, <laughs> yeah, there was no moving air around there, so you just have to take a minute, wow. just kind of catch your breath, and yeah, just, you know, Aww. chill for a minute. <laughs> well, Josh, congratulations. We've got like half a minute, so okay. anything else you want to share with anybody? Well, Before we go. That's it. Well, uh, I'm not taking custom orders right now. I, what I'm doing okay. instead is that uh, I'm just making knives. As I finish them, I put them on my website. And, and you can buy those. Yes, those and you can buy those. And I also have uh, shirts on my website and stickers soon. And yeah. Maybe you'll get back to the custom one day. One day. Maybe. I'm, <laughs> one I'm day so busy. If I were to take, say, yeah, if I were to take custom orders, I would be booked out for a year or two. Wow. Uh, wow. I just. I went full time last year, and I took a year's worth of orders, and it was insane. <laughs> so wow! Well, congratulations, so Josh much. Wentz. He is the winner of the recent Forged in Fire on the History Channel, and oh, I'll share with you folks in a minute where you can go see that because they can go see it again and stuff. Yeah. All right, folks. I'm gonna be back. I've got a couple of other guests coming up. It's down here with Tina. Dagger Law has been part of the Lancaster community for more than 110 years. This is where we live and work. You'll see us at festivals, sporting events, and all around town. We consider our clients as friends, and we walk alongside you through challenging times. Whether you're a growing business, a changing family, facing litigation, planning your future, or dealing with land issues, we're right here. We are local. We are trusted. We are experienced. Dagger Law. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Welcome back to Down Home with Tina. I now have Vinnie Coleman. He's point guard for the Lancaster semi-pro basketball team, Lancaster Thunder, and I'm really excited to find out What's going to happen this year? Because like everything else, it's a little different and maybe a lot different. So Vinny, how are you? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well, you know, under the circumstances of always just taking one day at a time. Right. And I'm sure that's probably what it's been like for you guys, hasn't it? Yes, ma'am. One day at a time, uh, just getting back to the swing of things with COVID and the new uh, world that we're living in today. <laughs> what has it been like so far for you all? Because, well, this is what going into, and I know we've talked about this a yeah. little bit. Is it now technically the fourth season? Is it, it's the fourth year for the Lancaster Thunder, but what kind of season have you guys, like at the end of last year, summed up, that up right. to be? Um, yes. Yeah, so this is our fourth year technically as a team. Um, okay. Third season technically. Um, last season got canceled due to COVID. So uh, pretty much like three and a half, if you want to call it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're on our third season, fourth year as a team. Um, so. Well, how many games did you even play last year? Uh, we played about 
10 games last year uh, out of a 20 game season. So you, it's so like we got halfway year. through. Yeah. What was it like for you all to go through that and then, and what the year is so far this year for you? Because you've only done practices. Correct? Yes. Uh, only done practices. Last year when the season got canceled, nobody really knew new disease, uh, new rules, didn't know yeah. how things are going. Uh, but this year, since we started, um, obviously we've implanted new rules at practice. Um, we only get to practice about one time a week um, due to just getting into gyms and things like that. It's tough. Okay. But uh, yeah, I think we've put in the hand sanitizing, the oh, uh, yeah. mask, we all wear masks and we don't have anybody at practice but us. So it's eliminated a lot of uh, people being able to interact for now. <laughs> Has it just been a challenge trying to do the normal way of what you do with basketball? Yeah. <laughs> because there's so much contact. Right. Well, sometimes not supposed to be that much contact <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when it comes to fouls and things, but you know what I'm saying. Yes. Because it is, it's like that, the, you know, I, I say one-on-one, -on -one, but mm -hmm. it is when you are protecting, you know, the ball and things like that. Or, Correct. So, yeah, uh, just try to stay safe as possible. Um, try to, you know, uh, stay away from people that sick outside of basketball. Um, do things. Um, just be safe. Yeah, <laughs> just be, be safe. safe. <laughs> That's the best thing that you can say. Yeah, just like all this, all of us that um, we all have to try and do. So, what is one of your favorite things about being with the Lancaster Thunder? Uh, one of my favorite things about being with the Thunder is uh, our impact on the community and what we get to do in the community. Uh, we do a lot of food drives now that it's Christmas. We've done toy mm -hmm. drives and just uh, I want to thank the sponsors. We have a lot of sponsors that buy into us and, uh, you know, around that Lancaster community, it gives us as players a chance to give back and uh, get to know the people of the community because a lot of us are from different places. Yes, absolutely, and that is, I think, this is the fun. Why did you start playing basketball? Was it something you just loved from the, right from the start? Yep, just fun. Somebody put a ball in my hands, and, you know, <laughs> it's a wrap ever since then. <laughs> it's going to be tough being, I mean, any position on a basketball team can be pretty tough, but point guard, there's a lot laying on your shoulders at times, yeah. isn't there? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You, you, you're in charge of running the plays and running the show, pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, balls in your court. Uh, pretty much 70% of the time. <laughs> so, do you have a special message that you would like to give to your fans for this holiday season and during this pandemic? Yes, I want to wish all the Lancaster fans a happy holidays. Uh, I want you guys to stay safe, practice all the uh, rules that we implemented, uh, stay sanitized, stay, uh, you know, uh, social distancing, mm -hmm. all the things that we talked about. Um, I hope you guys can come out once the season and the vaccines and everything get going. Yep. And hopefully you guys can watch us play. Yep, and then that will be what it's all about, is hearing you, them all in the stands again. So, And I know they've got something come up this week, and we do have more with the Lancaster Thunder coming up in just a couple of minutes. It's Down Here with Tina. Hi, I'm Amanda Wattenberg, Regional Director at Ohio Guidestone. Do you or does someone you know have a substance abuse disorder? Have you been thinking about getting help but don't know where to start? It takes a lot of courage to ask for help, but it's the most important step you can take. If you think you know everything that's available in Fairfield County, think again. Like other chronic diseases, addiction can be managed successfully. Treatment enables people to counteract addiction's powerful, disruptive effects on the brain's behavior and regain control of their lives. Even if it takes multiple attempts, treatment does work and people do recover from addiction every day. So keep trying because your life matters. You matter and we're here to help. Call 211 and ask for the treatment resources available right here in Fairfield County. This message is brought to you by the Fairfield County Adam H. Board. Welcome back to Down Home with Tina. I have now continued to have with me Vinnie Coleman. He's point guard from the 
semi-pro basketball team in Lancaster called the Lancaster Thunder. And so I have all these reindeer. They've kind of taken over the set today. Right. And the reason why is because I was on the phone with one of my best friends. She is the owner of Colony Classic Sand Interiors located on North High Street in Lancaster. And she said something to me about, oh, I wish we could have gotten the reindeer. I have all these reindeer in my shop, which reminded me because a year ago when I had the thunder on, it would have been Sean Rogers, who he is the captain of the team, correct? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. He wasn't able to make it today, but this is in honor of Sean because last year he decided, because we played that antler game, yeah. and, and because of social distancing, we can't, we can't be that close, and can't be stuffing these balloons in, and we got a clip for you to show you, but he popped a balloon, and it just, he's such a jokester, and he's so funny. He's kind of, would, you, would it be safe to say a little bit of the entertainment, or a lot of the entertainment? Oh, he's a lot of the entertainment. He's a lot of fun. Sean Rogers, we call him Mississippi. Uh, he, he's, he's our guy, man. He's funny. Uh, has the team cracking up all the time, nonstop. <laughs> yes, yes. He's such a great guy, a great guy. So anyway, so that's what we have the reindeer here for, just for him. And I was gonna say, and I actually brought Santa because I had also picked up Santa that day when I was gonna set up for the set and I saw that there was a, a list of names on here. He's not on it. Oh yeah, <laughs> But yeah. you know, maybe he, he made still the naughty made, list. He might, make the cut. he might make the nice list, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Well, we can't do without Sean, so he's got to eventually. Don't yeah. get in trouble with Santa, man. <laughs> That's don't right. get in trouble with Santa. <laughs> That's right. No, so let's talk a little more about the season. You do have your first scrimmage coming up this Saturday, correct? Yes, this Saturday, uh, December 19th. Um, right now, uh, as far as I hear it, uh, we're going to Kentucky. Okay, so we'll, as of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as of right now. Yeah, so, and those games, because you will not have spectators, correct? Uh, no, mm -hmm. ma'am. Uh, we're in preseason right now, and uh, so far there's been no uh, spectators uh, okay. due to COVID, but since the vaccine's out soon, uh, we should be able fingers to get crossed. fans by the regular season. Okay, so hopefully, fingers crossed. But fans can still watch you all play. Fans can still watch uh, our... Facebook page, uh, Lancaster Thunder, um, and we have a website, Lancaster Thunder, uh, B, 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 as in basketball, uh, dot com, Lancaster Thunder Basketball dot com. And you'll be streaming it live? Yes, ma'am. We'll be okay. streaming games live uh, on our Facebook Live as well as our YouTube okay. channel. Awesome, great, and that's also Facebook is a way folks can stay up to date on rather things will continue to progress forward and maybe change for spectators at some point. Is yes. that correct? Yes, all the updates. Uh, we, uh, Mike Johnson, he's really good at getting okay. people updated day by day. You had mentioned that you travel to Kentucky and you have a new bus, I hear. Yes, uh, have a new bus and uh, Sean Rogers, that very guy, uh, <laughs> he has a company and uh, they work with cars and so he painted it for us. So nice. should be looking nice and cool. <laughs> good, good. So congratulations with that. And speaking of new, new uniforms? New uniforms that I haven't seen yet. <laughs> I mean, what? I've been begging. We, the whole team been begging to kind of see what they look like. Uh, I'm still in all of last year's jerseys. Um, but yeah, we're very excited about the new jerseys that we're getting. Oh, and who's keeping those secrets from you? <laughs> uh, Hoover Apparel. Uh, go check them out. And uh, Mike Johnson and David Fant. <laughs> Uh, the owner of our team, they're hiding out. They don't want to let us know, but the new reveal is coming soon, and you can check that out on Facebook as well. Okay, yeah, they're not going to have that for the scrimmage. They're saving that for the first game? Yes, ma'am. Is that what they're doing? Well, the reveal and then the, the reveal, game, right? Yeah. yeah, oh, perfect. All right, what are we missing? So, folks, for tickets and things, those will be something that down the road, if that comes, they still will get tickets. You can get tickets on our uh, online. Matter of fact, uh, I think you can get them right now, and... Hold on to your tickets. Uh, we'll let you know if there's any changes, but if you visit our website, uh, LancasterThunderBasketball.com, you can get tickets there. I think there's only one thing that we have left. You have a really cool t-shirt, but I can have the opportunity to purchase a t-shirt like that, right? Yep, at okay. our online store. We have an online store on the website as well. Uh, we have hoodies, uh, t-shirts, uh, lots of different fan gear. Uh, thunder towels, anything you can think of. Uh, we're just trying to represent Lancaster. That's right, that's right. So you do have some new players on the team though this year. Yes. We failed to mention that. Yes, we have uh, about six core guys, older guys that have been on the team. 
Uh, but we have a lot of new rosters this year um, from the Toledo area all around Columbus. So, um, yeah, we're excited. New group of guys. We're ready to go after oh, it. Oh, Vinny, thank you so much. Thanks for being with me. And anything else that you can think of? I don't think so. I uh, think we've covered it all. I think we got it covered. David and Michael and the coach. Yes, same sir. coach? Uh, Jamel Cornley. Yes, sir. Yep. Mr. Penn State, Mr. Basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <Yep. laughs> well, best of luck to all of you. And I do hope that folks, y'all, of course, continue to stay safe. And, yeah. and they have to do their and take those precautionary measures even more so because you won't have a team yeah. <laughs> if you don't. If you yeah. come in. So, yeah. And happy holidays to you and the team. Thank you. Happy well. holidays. Thanks for having me. Thank you so Appreciate much. It. Folks, you're watching Down Home with Tina. And... Please keep an eye out on what's happening with our very own semi-pro basketball team, the Lancaster Thunder. I'll be back in just a minute. Fairfield Federal. When it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help. Our people make the difference. We were uh, retiring from Tucson, Arizona, and we made a retirement trip out around Ohio, having decided where we wanted to be. And we came across this town called Lancaster. And we fell in love with the downtown area, where the fountain is, and the memorials, and the flags, and, and all this stuff. And we looked around, and I said, there's our bank, right there. There's something to be said about a, a community bank in your hometown. Right. If you live in the community, you should do business in the community as much as possible. So it makes sense to bank with the community bank that you where you live. Fairfield Federal is the bank to be at. If, you're a bit, if you live in this town, or any town actually, you want to bank at a local home bank. And the employees are happy here, they're conversant, customer service is through the roof. There's nothing more you could ask for. Personal or business banking, whatever you need, we take it seriously because we know you do. Stop by today at any of our three locations and see why the difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Welcome back to Down Home with Tina. I'd like to thank my sponsors. I'd like to thank Fairfield Area Humane Society, Huddle Tire Company, Walker Shoe Center, Ireland Spa and Salon, and Ava Jewelers for their support, for me to get to come here every week and interview amazing folks like I've had today and I get to have each and every week. I've got a poem for you. It's a little bit of a sad poem, but we're gonna end on a happy, positive note. The poem just was a poem that was shared on Facebook. It doesn't have an author. I am not the author. I'm not taking credit of where credit is not due. So here's the poem. It is about the pandemic and COVID-19. "'Twas a month before Christmas and all through the town, people wore masks that covered their frown. The frown had begun way back in the spring when a global pandemic changed everything. They called it Corona, but unlike the beer, it didn't bring good times, it didn't bring cheer. Airplanes were grounded, travel was banned. Borders were closed to cross air, sea, and land. As the world entered lockdown to flatten the curve, the economy halted and folks lost their nerve. From March to July, we rode the first wave, People stayed home, they tried to behave. When summer emerged, the lockdown was lifted, but away from caution, many folks drifted. Now it's December and cases are spiking. Wave two has arrived, much to our disliking. It's true that this year has had sadness aplenty. We'll never forget the year 2020. And just round the corner, the holiday season. But why be merry, is there even one reason? To decorate the house and put up the tree. Who will see it? No one but me. But outside my window, the snow gently falls, and I think to myself, let's deck the halls. So I gather the ribbon, the garland and bows. As I play those old carols, my happiness grows. Christmas is not canceled, and neither is hope. If we lean on each other, I know we can cope. We just need to remember, folks, that we want to, I want to see you next year. So I certainly hope that you will just be safe and make sure that you continue to do what you have to do. Loneliness is only, I think, what we, we make it out to be. Yes, we don't want to be alone. But again, you want to see your family next season, the next holiday. So do what you got to do. Do that social distancing, wash your hands, wear your masks, or if you have to, just stay in. 
So I did something that I've never done before. I did this little thing that was on social media and I thought, okay, this is, I'm doing it because we don't have a whole lot of fun these days. And it was, it's called Secret Sister and I've got some amazing gifts. This is one of my gifts you see here and Beth Miller Andrews made it. And I just did it because I wanted something fun to do. So if you get a chance to spend 10 bucks and do something great, I would recommend that you do it. I just hope that you have and, and just enjoy the holiday season. I'll be back next week for my Christmas show. God bless and good day.